and the Pilgrim Fathers who sailed aboard the Mayflower across to America. Well, the Americans are here, and John Tarmac wears the blue jersey as a leader in the Grundig uh, UCI Mountain Bike World Cup for 1994. Transcend to uh, have a look at the women before they got underway in their particular race, but it's Britain and it's raining. <laughs> Julia Furtado doesn't seem to be too worried about that, though. Uh, although she has had a bit of slip-up in her program this show, having lost one of the races. Chantal Dacour here, unfortunately, in the World Championships, looking for better things today. Susan Dabati, all these girls gathering under what are pretty disgusting conditions. In fact, the course has been cut back. It was originally a 13.7-kilometre course, now shut to 11.6 kilometres, and the riders warming up here. And I think I'll have a chance to nip across and have a look with Juliana Portado and Susan Dabati before the race gets uh, underway. Just how they feel today. <laughs> Lively, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm confident. I don't, I don't like, like I would say, I don't know how I'll do, but I'm not sick or injured or anything. So I just don't want to run. <laughs> Watch you. Thanks. <laughs> Right, she has. And uh, what about uh, Susan? I sure are hoping for a top three. If I can get third or above, I'm going to be the happiest girl on the field. So I hope so. And there's one girl that might stop up. Betso, the reigning world champion, not actually riding in a longish white uh, leg warm she normally has. It is extremely chilly, and many of the girls and spectators finding it not quite the summer we've been hoping for. And in sharp contrast to last year's race when the sun beat down and the track was extremely hard and. Uh, that's my co-friend and commentator, Hugh Porter, in the background there. Here, four times world cyclo cross champion, and no mean cross-country uh, cyclo cross man either. We used to ride together many, many years ago, and he took over and I left. And uh, you now that cyclo cross rider is wetting their lips, of course. Cyclo cross, not a sport that the mountain bike girls have been brought up in, though. Carol Alexander is the British cyclo cross champion, as well as the major contender for the crown in this year's World Cup. She's what lying uh, third at the moment in the uh, classification going into the this round here and here that's a good start by the road ace Jenny Longo on the right hand side world pursuit champion world road champion as well she started alongside Cal Alexander they they come down this drop Dacoy in the front Fotada behind this is a real tricky one first time round all looking for a good line and Longo not finding it to a liking at all down she goes well She's got a lot of learning to do, although she did take the silver medal in the World Championship at Metabier when at Metabier we had some disgusting conditions. They really were rough, but nevertheless, these girls here working their way down some very difficult parts of the course. Gingerly, gingerly takes the... Oh, going too quick, bang, she's gone! And, oh, that's a real nasty one then. That's uh, Susan Jolly from, from Great Britain, who's just coming on a mighty thump, but I hope she's all right. Up in front... No problem, though, for Alexander. that's taken over the lead then from Julia Furtado. And Petzo, the world champion, into third spot behind them. Chantal de Court in the lead now. Well, she's had a pretty disastrous uh, start to the World Cup Series, has uh, Chantal. We keep our fingers crossed. She was fifth in the 1993 World Cup, and uh, every event we've had so far, she's been in all sorts of problems. Potato starting slowly here, and just behind her then, Susan Damati for Diamond Back. <laughs> Who wants water on a day like this? There's plenty of it about the place, and the girls, not too hot at the moment, are going through without taking the, the offerings from the helpers here. And Petzo has lost a bit of ground, and she's taking a slightly different direction through there on a track well run down by previous uh, cyclists going through. Alexander. And she's got to curve for company. Furtado is not finding it all her own way today, and uh, this will be good news for the massive crowd around this course. In the tricky parts here, there's not much in the way of encouragement as far as the girls are concerned. Uh, Damati uh, goes on in third place, but the great news as far as the British supporters are concerned to see Carol Alexander come out of the, the woods and further down the course with uh, the reigning Grundig world champion way back in fourth spot, and yes, 
popped out of the woods like a cork from a bottle. Alexander charging away at the front. De Matti it is now that's closed up, and I'm bad news again then. We hear that uh, Dacour is in all sorts of trouble yet again, so it looks like she's going to be a bit anxious to try and get her bike repaired and see if she can get back in the action, but there's something happened back there at the moment. These two are racing away right now. De Matti and Carl Alexander. Well, this is some race we've got here today, and the world champion a bit off the pace. Long legs, this uh, skiing specialist, wondering what on earth she's doing here, bashing amongst the mud, but that's how she won her championship at Meta BF in going through the, the very muddy conditions there. And here we are on the final lap, and at long last, Fortado has worked her way through with Decor then suffering a third consecutive mechanical disaster. She's out of it now. That's uh, going to be very, very unfortunate as far as she's concerned. But look at the state of the back there. The mud's all been thrown up. <laughs> I don't think the organisers put that stream in deliberately to wash some of it away, but it certainly helps because unlike Cyclocross, you can't have the bikes handed over in the pits, sprayed down, and then get another bike next time round. And that's why they have these uh, uh, cantilever-type brakes with the, the wire at the top so that the, the mud doesn't get all gunged up uh, between the, the, the calipers and, uh, and, the th and the tires. Dematti going through then in second place and waiting with bated breath to see what's happened to Carl Alexander, the early pace set up. And here she is, much to the great applause of the crowd who like to see this British girl in action, the girl from Barrow up there in Cumbria, now down in Plymouth, as far apart as you could possibly get, I suppose, from uh, Cumbria down into Plymouth. And Sylvia first showing all her season strength as an ex-world champion goes through the water in hot pursuit the leaders come back for more action in a moment Megatron-Effekt. Schärfer. Brillanter. Echter. Grundig Megatron. Forceful riding of Juliana Furtado has now put her back into the lead. Hotly pursued then by Carol Alexander, who's got wedged in between her. Uh, Dimati, the diamond back girl, and this girl, Regina Stafel, that's trying to get up to them as well. Well, she's another very, very seasoned competitor indeed, and uh, comes from Austria. Mainly likes to ride in Europe, by the way, so uh, though she'd been world downhill champion, uh, she was eighth in 1992. And in 1991, she won the Grundig Challenge at well, that was Regina Stiefel. That was in a very muddy conditions, too. She's still looking for a placing in the top three, perhaps today it might be. But uh, she's just a little bit off the pace at the moment. And that girl is setting a cracking ride at the front. Back wheel locked. Oh, sitting well back over the wheel. Just ease herself around, I suppose, what we might call Longo uh, Corner, from where Jenny crashed there on the last lap. But here, Susan Dematti then, 31 years of age, comes from San Francisco. She actually started out in nursing. Well, she nursed the bike down there, nice and comfortable. Alexander spun it all over the place. Give you some idea that the conditions have not got better. In fact, they've gone worse. The Gerben front fork, she's gone to climb bike. Those two straight forks working just behind the front fork in front of the head is where the suspension system just takes the bumps out of the way down. And Sylvia first, also looking for the best line possible. And she goes also into the longer, co longer corner. Rise to specialised. Right 
And that's an excellent ride then by first showing all her skills. This girl too, well, she's come back on to form now. We all sort of held her breath uh, when she had that disappointing ride and only could finish in uh, second spot uh, in Italy. But having won the first round in Spain, won again in uh, Belgium. Now she looks like she's heading into a winner. Susan Damate then, the Diamondback girl coming through here. Excellent climber, this girl. Well, she's studying Italian, and I hope she had a chance to practice that down in Elba, but she'll be able to go back to America, because that's where the next round's going to come from, and speak the language. Well, I see this chappy with his T-shirt on, nervous records, it says. Well, I think some of these girls will find this a bit uh, nail-biting, if you could take your hands off the handlebars and do such a thing, but no concentration to pick the right line with those knobbly tires digging into what's left of the surface. That's very nice action. Nice, nice. Oh, she lost it! And a sympathetic round of applause from the crowd. I said that uh, she was getting the right line. Suddenly it went, just shows you the, the narrow margin between being upright and coming over. And there again, Regina Stiefel on the way down now. <laughs> there she goes. Well, she was German champion in 1991. She's been around a few years now. Well, some 28 years of age. And here, oh, she's lost it as well. Well, I didn't really fall. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't really fall. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like, yeah, that's I like to hear. A bit of uh, chat there. Uh, so, my goodness, down we go. This is one of the problems of this particular uh, sport, then, is staying upright. And that was uh, Jilly Smith, the Canadian, who went for a, a bit of a slide. Can you see the state of these bikes? Julie Furtado, the concentration on her face. Last year, she won every one of the Grundy grounds she went into. The only one she didn't ride last year was Plymouth. And perhaps now she's wishing she hadn't bothered today. But she needs the points to keep that blue jersey. Dematti then coming up here. On the World Championship Hill climb way back in 1990, that was on when she rode up this one. She's having to push her bike up. But you can see the sort of plate just behind the... the uh, the, the down tube on a, a GT bike here, that's what they call a crud catcher. There's plenty of crud flying off that front wheel today. It's to stop the, the grit flying straight up into your face. Uh, and uh, some of the riders seem to prefer to use a system like that. Also here you see that uh, on a Diamondback bike, Susan Demand has done the same thing, got a crud catcher up there. Rather vertical looking uh, bar and she's got. And the crowd then... A um, very good crowd considering the conditions. Plymouth being a long way down in the southwest of England. They've travelled some distance to come here. This girl's travelled all the way from America. She's going to go back then wearing the blue jerseys. Leader in the Grundig World Cup series by winning the race here at Plymouth in fine style. And the pain and suffering that she's gone through. There it is. She crashed. She's hurt her elbow. But she's managed to get to the finish just ahead of Susan DeMatte. And she looks pleased with that one. It'll be her best performance so far in the series. And Carl Alexander coming into third spot. My friend Hugh Porter can spot her coming into the distance. And the crowd here waiting for her to swing into the finishing straight. Here she is then to a good round of applause. Great to see her up there. And I'm sure when she goes across to America, she's going to battle to stay in contention for that honour. But Juliana Fatale is taking some catching. I'm sure she's going to be happy. Well, the first lap I felt horrible. Oh, like, she I felt horrible. Go, and uh, I think maybe because I was so cold to start, but ev uh, you know, no, everyone should have been cold to start because we got so poured upon. But I thought I was having a terrible day, and then I gradually worked into it in second, and third lap. Uh, my legs came around, but I wasn't holding back. I just I couldn't go. Well, go she did. And let's have a look at the final result then up there. Furtado winning, Damati second, Alexander into third spot. Sean Roberts, the British girl, back in 13th. Isla Roundtree back in 18th. Alain Sinclair in 21st. Angela Ward 24th. And a whole gaggle, 13 girls from Britain, filling spots 27 down to 39, including a girl called Sally Hunter, who rides, rides for a company called Smart Tart Cycles. That's unusual, isn't it? But there is the overall result in the round ranking. And Caroline Alexander into second place will be making her way across the Atlantic for the next round which will be at Mount Snow on June 18, 19. Well, the men gathering for the start of their race, and I'm happy to know that uh, my good friend Malvinder Singh, the managing director of Muddy Fox, has made it here. Not many MDs turn up to watch uh, bike racing, but he's come all the way down from London. 
And uh, here we have Mike, uh, Mike Klug, who's also come to join the race time. He's had a slow start, Theo. He's not been very well. And yes, he's been some time off his bike, but uh, he's looking for getting back into form. Obviously, like I've done well every time we've had a race, even in British races, I've done well here. So, yeah, it's, it's a good course for me. Uh, no matter what the conditions are. David Baker then, certainly in with a shout today, won the Grundy ground here last uh, year when it was held at, uh, at Plymouth. And he started well this year too, in the round two, fifth there at Elba, sixth at uh, Madrid. And here he is then in the midst of his pack on the left-hand side, and they charge away from the start. Massive crowd of rise as usual. That first dash, very important. And one of the riser back there suddenly spotted, uh, looked like Adrian Timmis for Valley, because he's had to qualify. The top 50 go into the uh, finals. And who's going to be first down on the drop here? Well, steady on the brakes, lads. It's a very difficult part of the course. As they rocket through there, let's watch the line they're taking there. John Clay for Orange looking quite good at the moment. And other the Cyclo Cross come road riders that uh, certainly know their way around. And the riders begin to spe spread out already on this uh, particular part of the course. That's uh, the Spanish rider doing quite well, just in front of uh, Tinker Jerez. That's a very good start as far as he's concerned. Good to see him up there at the moment. Gary Ford seems to have dropped out the picture a bit, was um, well up there at the beginning. So one or two them begin to have a few problems on this course. And Dernice has taken the lead. In fact, no, Gary's still there. He, just, he was uh, in the lead to begin with. Gary Ford, number 20 then for, for Scott. Charged away at the front. Now he's done the right thing to sit in behind uh, Dernice. And just behind then, uh, that's Don Marlin, number nine, the American Cyclo Cross Champion. And a nice twosome here. David Baker leading uh, Barry Clark with Tinker Jurez just behind them. That's Jurez. And Mike Klug bringing up this little gaggle of riders at the back. So he's, <laughs> he doesn't look too happy with himself, does he? But it, it's nice to see him in there and uh, looking quite comfortable at the moment. Just the back then... Uh, the rest of the riders, enormous field, it's only a couple of hundred riders in this race, but this man at the front wearing the World Championship jersey, twice the mountain bike champion of the world and once cyclocross champion, Henrik Denise, start the season very well indeed, but this is the fellow that uh, has the blue jersey as leader in the World Cup, Grundig World Cup, and he's gone through. That's Bre uh, uh, Brenton's has just got through as well now, and bad news, we've heard that Frischnet has had a problem, smashed his wheel, so Thomas Frischnet is in all sorts of trouble as now Don Marler puts on the pressure and ploughs past uh, Den uh, Denise. Bad luck then for Frischnet, the reigning World Cup leader uh, from last year, has not had a good start this season, so he's out of contention now, and John there in the blue, on the wheels, we're going to take a short break, come back for more action in a moment. Megatron-Effekt. Schärfer. Brillanter. Echter. Grundig Megatron. of life.
on the fourth lap. Denise just ahead of uh, John Tomac. On the last lap, third lap, uh, Martin Early retired, just couldn't stay on his bike. The Tour de France stage victor, Victor also in the stage in the Giro d'Italia, finished well up last week, well, 20th, I suppose he was last week, but now Martin Early, the rally professional, just can't stand the slippiness of course. He's gone out. The other one of the rally team that's gone, Adrian Timmis, has crashed and broken three ribs, so that's bad luck for the bowl, Adrian. Gary Coltman also out of action on one lap, which is unusual because he's a cyclo-cross rider, so thick and fast they're retiring in this race, and probably only had about 70 riders left as we're getting into the fourth of the five laps here on this particular very, very tough course indeed. The dry part, way up at the top, they have not got the long climb up to Dartmoor this year because of the, the very bad conditions and uh, the race is certainly going to last a lot longer than they thought. They were hoping to race for something like about uh, two hour and a half hours or so but it's going up to bills about three hours at this rate of knots as Mike Clue goes through. This will do him the world of good in uh, helping him get back into form. He's lying up uh, just somewhere in the top 20 at the moment and there Denise ahead of Tomac, just outside the top 20. Richard Thackeray for pace, Ron Hill is uh, around about 23rd, 24th the moment, being hotly pursued by uh, Chris Young, the Muddy Fox rider back in 26th. And the other Thackeray is back in the top 50, around about 40 odd, 45th or so. Darren Barkley's still in there as well. James Norfolk, Dan Cook, lots of Brits up in the top 50 at the moment. John Clay doing a great ride back in 14th. And Gary Ford still in there, dropped off the pace a bit, back in 10th at the moment. We saw him early on start well, but he's, he's blown a bit. And these two are the leaders. Interesting change of tactics here for Termac to be doing a cyclocross job and running with his bike on the back and for the ex-cyclocross world champion Denise and twice world mountain bike champion to be riding the bike. He's got one of these soft ride suspension stems by the way. If you want to get a chance to look at the handlebar stem on Denise's bike, it's two parallel arms of uh, aluminium with a spring in the midst of it to take out the, the vibrations of the road. But right now, I think they could do with a damn good bucket of water to clean the bike more than anything. And you can see the little red things on the, on the handlebars. Those are the grip shift system, which this man here, John Termac, pioneered first of all. The, it's like a motorcycle twist grip almost, but cut down only about an inch and a half long. As Baker comes up to him now, uh, you just flick the, uh, uh, the, 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 gear, the ring round and it changes gear for you. And many of the riders are now using that sort of equipment. But Termac's beginning to tire. And you see the problem with putting your bike on his shoulders. His bottle cage now has been bent with his shoulder, pressing against the bottle. But uh, he seems to think that's the best way to go, whereas Baker's got the bike further uh, down forward and his, sh his shoulder on the seat tube, not on the down tube, to keep the bottle out of the way. Denise looking remarkably cool. And for a chap who normally starts the season extremely slowly, he won a couple of races in early April out in America. And to see him in such good form as this, and Baker really uh, is now pressing on the power, and Clark's come up to him as well. Clark's had a, a punch away back down the road. He was uh, around that 20th by the time he got his, his bike reorganised. So Clark's fought his way back up. It's a great ride by Barry Clark then. The two roundabouts are sandwiching John Tomac. In fact, John also rides a rally, but he's come from America. The other two made up at, at Ilkeston. Uh, well, it used to be the Ilkeston head office. They've moved now into, uh, into the main office where Gerald Donovan's busy building these beautiful bikes. And here, the Richie rider going straight through at the front, and he's opened up quite a useful gap now. Baker's chasing after him, and Tomac's with him, so Baker now moved up there into second place with Tomac into third. A lot of activity going on behind, and bad luck then for Barry Clark. He's punctured yet again, so that's put him out of contention. He came in to this series this time, lying, what, equal second or equal third overall in the Grundig series, and a lot of chasing coming on from behind. Peter Hrick here has found a lot of strength, and he's come through. Hrick now is making a challenge for the lead. Another man that's going well here, Bart Brengens, he punctured on the second lap and had to pace himself back as well, but he's done that. Don Mara, the American cyclocross champion, still in with a shout as well. This is a tremendous race, the way these chaps are going. Mara then being followed by Tomac, who's really struggling. And he's in all sorts of trouble now. Denise sets a very, very fat pace in front. 
Well, back down the list then, uh, just looking at just Chris Young, he'd be happy. He's lying about 26 at the moment, and uh, he was telling me that he's been rather tired all the travelling. He's been going off, uh, riding in the various rounds of the, the Grundig series. We see a lot more British riders in contention this year, but of course the travelling is really tiring, particularly if you can't afford to go by aeroplane, but uh, he's been going with Richard Thackey, and now he's hoping to go across to perhaps ride one or two of the American races to stay, or get in the 20th overall in the Grundig series. We we'll wish him luck, and... And these riders this part of the course. That's a tricky one. So Hicks just got through. Brentjens coming on behind then. And they're putting the pressure on David Baker, who's had Hick and Brentjens. Oh, this is a tremendous challenge as far as he's concerned, but he's digging quite deep and showing the British fans something to cheer about in some very good company indeed. But uh, the victory is going to go to Henrik Dennis. That the Richie rider taking the lead and I should think he probably put him in the, uh, the top position for the Grundig uh, blue jersey, we'll have to wait and see about that. Hrick has really closed the gap down. This man uh, who won the Grundig Challenge Cup way back in 1991 and is a great cyclocross rider too, but to look at the state of uh, the winner. Baited breath then, as Bart Brentjens has done it, this man in uh, Holland has won just for every mountain bike race there is, and this time coming into third spot here, ahead of David Baker. And back then in fifth, Don Mara, John Tomac has struggled, he's right back in sixth spot now. And Henrik Dennis, who often speaks in English, choosing to uh, speak in German this time. Yeah, that's why he said they all did that, that last round. The, it was uh, not as fast as they thought. He went on a lot longer. As Baker comes in, then absolutely exhausted. The race then taking them some three hours and seven minutes instead of just over two and a half as they thought. And lots of riders found that last lap just too much for them to struggle through. But there then is a confirmation of that result. And. Baker then in fourth spot. Well, it didn't repeat the victory from last year. But the, uh, the standard of the mountain bike racing at the Grundig level really has come up. And here we are, the overall ranking at the moment now. Barry Clark's dropped out of it at the moment. He's lying sixth overall and, uh, sorry, seventh overall with David Baker in sixth spot on the overall rankings. So, from Eurosport's coverage of the Grundig, it's time to say bye-bye. Mount Sinan comes up next. That'll be on June 18th, 19th, the race takes place, and in the following week, we'll bring you the programme. Watch the action now, as we say to you. Bye-bye. The mountain.